Commissioner John <laughs> Wiley Price. Look, it's not lost on me that mm. you don't do a whole lot of interviews. So thank you for taking some time, uh, graciously taking some time to interview with us. Today we're talking, of all things, about hair. Now look, you told me that you watched one of my Rooted series, at least yeah. one of them. Oh yeah. All right, so we've been talking about a transgenerational look at black hair and professionalism. So if you had to talk about mm. black hair in, in your time in public office, has it ever been a concern for you or has it ever, ever come up in conversation? Oh, it's come up in conversations. People oh. have tried to uh, make it a, a point of contention. But I understand in terms of our heritage, how the crown is, is so important. I don't think I'm Samson or nothing and don't want anybody to talk about uh, cutting my locks, but hair, 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 is, hair is important. And it, it says a lot about an individual. Uh, when I transitioned from what is just kind of considered a, a basic haircut to allowing my hair just to, to be natural, um, it, it was interesting. A lot of comments, uh, a lot of speaking engagements. When people say, well, are you really a county commissioner uh, with your hair like that? Yeah, kind of. And so it just kind of comes with the package now. Not kind of. Really, <laughs> I am. <laughs> uh, that's it. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just saying in terms of the look, mm -hmm. uh, I think people were just taken aback. Mm -hmm. uh, and keep in mind, you know, I've been doing this now for a couple of decades, Ms. Tootsie for a couple of decades has been doing my hair. And so as a result, uh, it, I think you'd be surprised at how long it really is. And she twisted and it, it works for me and I'm okay with it, I'm comfortable. All right, I like that. I'm comfortable with okay. how I'm rocking my hair. <laughs> yeah. I saw a post over here on the wall said in 1991, you rocking a new look. <laughs> how did that go over with people as you transitioned to, to rocking your twist? Well, I think that, uh, again, that was all the commentary. Really? You're going to do your hair like that? And I think some people thought I would, I may go to dreads, etc. But, you know, like I said, I'm comfortable. She uh, twisted it and has been twisted, and I'm okay with it. And, you know, I, I've watched so many professions kind of transition. Uh, it, my, my hair is going to always be me. It's going to always be me. And, and as again, I, I, you know, I wouldn't know me without it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Walk me through how you've worn your hair over the years. You said you transitioned from what we would call... I don't want to say uh, normal haircut, but you transition from what we would call a basic haircut, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say a fade. I don't know right, how you right, used to rock it, yeah, right? <laughs> all of that, yeah. But walk me through <clears throat> over the years. You've been in your position, what, 36 years now? 36 We're at 36? Years. 36. 36 years. 36 My goodness. Years, yeah. You've been in your position for 36 years at this point. Walk me through kind of the evolution of how you wore your hair. Well, I mean, it was just, like, I, uh, some people may call it a, a crew cut. I mean, um, some people uh, back in the day may have called, I, I think I've had a, a, a Sputnik. I mean, I've been in, as a commissioner 36 years. I was with uh, Judge Steele uh, almost 10 years before that. And so, you know, it, it's just uh, what people would probably consider uh, acceptable. And so they were okay with it. I just decided that, you know, I wanted to go to a, another level. What do you say to people who consider it unacceptable in the workplace? They, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Nobody would probably say that to me, but, you know, if, if someone is having a challenge in the workplace, you know, the, the basic rule is, you know, if you're comfortable with it, you, you are, uh, you, you're groomed in a way that, that represents you, and uh, it's, you know, then fine. If, if I'm a singer in the nightclub, I can have the fuchsia, I can have the greens, I can do all of that. Uh, but in certain workplace, that, that's, just, that's, just not, that's just not acceptable. And I understand that. I mean, you, you couldn't, if, if you decided that you wanted to work for me and you wanted to have fuchsia, uh, not quite. Might Not have quite. to say something, huh? Yeah. Look, you know, 
I know you appreciate history as we all should, right? Can you talk about the historical context? You mentioned heritage earlier and our crowns and how important they are to us. Can you talk about the historical context of black hair and what it means to you personally and just overall? Well, I think, again, hair says so much. And again, I, with a little levity, I said something a few minutes ago about uh, uh, Samson. Uh, but uh, uh, when you look at black hair, uh, even from the Christian Jesus concept, uh, the, those uh, individuals that were in the fiery furnace said, uh, uh, King, you told me to put three in there. And I went back and when I turned it up seven times, there were four. And one had hair like lamb's wool and feet like burnt brass. Well, the concepts in our Christianity, in our divinity, has probably swayed us in terms of what does it look like? What I should look like? Mm -hmm. And so as a result, I think that that's, that's what we've done. We, we've uh, acquiesced uh, to saying that is the vision of divinity. Not lamb's wool. Very few people talk about lamb's wool. Well, very few people look like lamb. So when you, when you do that, you have a different concept of yourself. And again, you're comfortable, you know, in your skin. You're not going to go to the Middle East and, or, or what some people call the Middle East. It's really Africa. And you're not going to find individuals, uh, you know, with... Um, hair like our perceived divinity. Michelangelo did what Michelangelo did. He 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 framed divinity in his in his in his own person. And and, and that's fine. But but I, you know I do follow the scriptures. I just act like I don't the <laughs> scriptures say that uh, again, I'm gonna keep going back. The hair like lamb's wool and uh, feet like burnt brass. What do you think that says to a person if, if they hear that scripture? What does it say uh, to someone, like you said, who has been deeply, you know, embedded in the word? What does that say to them? Well, hopefully it says that you need to re revisit yourself. I think, uh, again, in the biblical concept, it's called renew your mind, mm -hmm. okay? You need to renew your mind. Uh, my mama used to say, boy, you need to come to yourself. So, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm coming to myself. I, I know who I am. I'm comfortable in my skin. And, and, and part of that, you know, is from, from the hair to the feet. I'm comfortable. Well, you know, the, the, we've got to get comfortable in terms of our representation of who we are. And, and that's one of the things, you know, I, I, I see with you. You're, you're comfortable with, with who you are. I mean, you know, no other... Um, race in this country has, has dealt with the kind of transitions we have. I mean, we, we didn't know where we want to deal with Marvel or cream. I know you're a little young, so you ain't going to know what I'm talking about. But, but some of the, your, your, your older uh, viewers, they, they understand. Marvel or cream. Really? You, 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 that, that's, uh, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, that stuff you put on your skin to lighten your skin. Mm. You know, mm. we've, gone, we've gone through that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, if, if I say bergamot, you know, a lot of people who don't like me don't know what bergamot is. You may be a little young, know what bergamot. Is. Royal crown, I, you know, and I know so royal crown. Yeah, it? I understand, <laughs> but I, but I, but my mom sat there with that pressing comb with my with my uh, sister's hair. You know, I, I know that bergamot uh, smell. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that self rate smell too. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, but my point is, is that that's been part of our evolution. Okay, and so the moment that People started saying, "Yeah, hey, I want to be natural." Now, natural today means something different than natural when I was younger. Natural meant you had a big old afro. Mm -hmm. I had a natural, okay. Yeah. I had a big afro. I had an afro was <laughs> probably, you know, eight, eight, you know, a pick and all. So I mean, my my point is, there's been an evolution. Wait, you had an afro? Oh yeah. 
Okay, hold on. Now, see, I told you to tell me about your hair growing going through the years. <laughs> but so, that was that was long before I was, you know, I was in the office. I had just come out of high school, like in school. I mean, you know, I went through. I'm a kid of the, you know, it's, it's not like I'm a, a spring chicken. I mean, I, I you know, I've kind of. You know, go, gone through a, a, a few generations. You know, <laughs> well, we uh, say in fact, earlier, you've been around fact, a block a time or two. Hey, and I made the promise: three score and ten. So you know, hey, I've been here for a minute. So I've ha I've seen the afro. I've had the afro. You know, I've had the beards. Mm -hmm. You know, the mustache. I, I've gone through all of that, but I'm comfortable in where I am. Now. What year did you have your afro? Ooh, probably about. 80, right, 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 in, in the 80s, because 85, I became a commissioner, so right before that, I was with Judge Steele, so in, in the 80s. Okay. You, you find it probably a picture of something around. Right? You know I'm going to look. <laughs> yeah, <so>. I know. <laughs> you mentioned your mom earlier, and as it relates to our elders, right, sometimes, you know, my grandmother is not going to have the same opinion of natural hair that I have, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. know, I've even had situations where she's like, are you gonna comb your comb hair, hair. I when you. I rock my afro? Mm -hmm. And so my question to you is, have you ever been in a situation where your elders, you know, said something that made you think like, is are they against the way that I'm rocking it right now or wearing my hair right now? Well, not really. I mean, I, I've had the same conversation about beards. Okay. You know, you know, you know. I'll let I'll let that stuff on your face. What? 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 And so, you know, you, you, as you said, the, the, it's it's the, it's the evolution, mm -hmm. and I talk about that uh, straightening comb that I can smell right now that that was on top of the the uh, the, the cook stove and Mama was heating it up, but. I think again, we're, we're, we're constantly evolving. We evolve probably more than than, than, than anybody mm -hmm. uh, in in this country because we're we're still trying to get our footing as, and comfortable who we are. But unfortunately, some of us are comfortable, but we're we're more concerned about what everybody else around us thinks. And you know, I guess I'm long since past that. How do you help other people get past that though? Because you got a lot of young folks, you know, folks are being told to, to cut their uh, locks off in order to participate in competitions. You got folks that being told, uh, young men being told that they can't walk at graduation because they have locks that are far too long. How do you help young people uh, get more comfortable, get to a point where you are? Well, my Angela said you can practice all the virtues in the world, but if you don't practice the virtue of courage, nothing else matters. And Garvey said, everything we need is inside of us, and we just need to realize it. You know, at some point in time, uh, you say, I can't walk. Do I, do I wrestle today, or do I cut my locks off? You know, that's a, that was a travesty. Mm -hmm. That was individual terrorism, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, how, how do you tell the kids been been been, been uh, wrestling all of this time, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna tell him either he cut his lock, you know, or he can't wrestle. He forfeits the match, you know. That's terrorism, mm -hmm. and I just say to individuals, look, I won't be terrorized. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I got I got too much history of terror. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to be terrorized. Miss Tootsie, uh -huh. is that your phone? Is that your phone? I just turned it off. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. I want to backtrack a little bit, and I want you to tell me some of the comments that have been made over the years about your hair, mm -hmm. right? You mentioned uh, the one individual, or maybe a few people saying you're a county commissioner. Mm -hmm. You know, with that hairdo. Yeah. What are some other things that people have said to you about your hair? Well, I mean, um, other than, you know, well, why you want to do that? I mean, really? I mean, I don't think it, quote, becomes you. Okay, what becomes me? Again, I've got to be comfortable. I can't be concerned about, you know, what they're saying. And so, and I've had individuals from other places even say, you know, I can't believe you. Your county commissioner, with that hair, they let they let you 
Uh, they let you? Really? Uh, last time I checked, I was, I was definitely over 21, and I was grown. And they let me? And so, you know, it, it, and, and it's interesting in, in terms of environments. If you're comfortable, people learn to get comfortable with you. But, you know, you, you can't act as though you want to try to uh, appease uh, everyone around you. That, that's, just not, that's just not going to happen. Translate for me what you um, understood from what the person said when they said um, uh, about, about how you're wearing your hair when the person said they allow you to do it. <laughs> translate, <laughs> translate that for me. Well, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's like permissiveness. Uh, even now, as I deal in workplace environments, as, as people in certain states deal with what we call crown legislation, which is nothing but dealing with, 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 the, with, with the hair and the ability uh, to, um, to wear your hair in a very uh, comfortable, uh, representative manner. The, it's amazing that you, you, you wind up having to still um, deal in workplace environments. Now, as a, as a ranking member uh, of, the, of the commissioner's court, I wind up dealing with policies, even under the law enforcement, at least wanting to review them in terms of, of are the policies changing with mm -hmm. the, um, with the times? Mm -hmm. You know, there, there were times I remember when law enforcement could, couldn't wear a mustache and couldn't wear beards. Now they can. Now, for an Anglo wearing a beard, it's a little different sometimes than, than African Americans uh, because of, 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 again, the, the, the curliness, uh, the follicle uh, of, the, of the hair. And uh, it, it creates some real challenges. And so it's, it's not the same. Okay, now we've got a general order that says, y'all can wear a beard. Well, you need to cut it a little closer. Well, the dermatologist said, if, if I do, the follicle will go in, it'll, it'll keloid, and as a result, it, it, it creates challenges for me. So, you know, you've got to change, you know, you know with, with, with the times. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and as a policymaker, it's, it's incumbent that I, that I do that. You know, what kind of workforce am I trying to attract? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and as such, you know, there, there's a certain uh, uh, representation that, that needs to represent the, the entire of society. Talk about that as it relates to this general order. I have it here from the Dallas County Sheriff's Department. What did you learn from this general order, and do you feel like it goes far enough? Well, I, I, I was teasing the, uh, the executive chief that uh, there's a difference between uh, uh, cornrows and twists. And uh, the general order just talks about uh, no twist. I said, well, I said, 99% of y'all don't know the difference uh, between them, so we need to go in and, and kind of amend those. But the general orders are reasonable. Uh, what the general orders basically say, you will represent them. However, if you've got locks, you know, because a lot of them work in an environment that the hair can present some danger. I understand it. So now, let's just, they said it, it can't be on the collar. Just put it up. You put it up on top of your head. It's real simple. But that doesn't mean you cannot have locks. Mm -hmm. It does not mean you cannot have, you know, cornrows uh, or twists. You just need to be able to represent uh, in a way that, it, first of all, it's not dangerous. Uh, and then number two, that represents the department. Dig into that for me a little bit more when they say your hair could be considered as, as dangerous. I understand it from a standpoint of, let's say you work in a hospital, right? It could get mm -hmm. in the way. It needs to be out of, you know, out of the way of what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe in the operating room. Right. When it comes to police officers, how does, for example, locks, if they have locks that, that are in a ponytail and they do go past your collar, how, does, how is that considered dangerous? Well, in custody, and, and when you talk about the Sheriff's Department, keep in mind, you're talking primarily about custody. The second largest uh, department uh, in this state, uh, the ninth largest in this country. And so now 
you've got, you know, 5,000 people in custody, and you're in and out of those facilities, um, having to handle individuals, be around, and, and, and should the, the hair be in, in a manner that someone could reach and grab, then it, it, can, it can present a danger. And so, yeah, that that it, that's that's reasonable. But you don't have to you don't have to terminate uh, to come to work for us. We're just saying that there's a certain presentation while you're at work that you need to be able to do so that it does not create uh, a, a danger. So, do you feel like this goes far enough? Well, we're we're going through the general orders now <laughs> and, and uh, doing some amendments. And and keep in mind, it's it's again, if if my mom would have. Um, published, authored those general orders, you know, I wouldn't even be able to have what I have on my head, you know, and, and I loved it dearly. But my point is, is that as as we migrate, as we talk about our workforce, as we, you know, look, in law enforcement now, a few years ago, if you had smoked marijuana, you couldn't be part of law enforcement. Now, if you haven't smoked it in the last six months, I guess. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, Is that you know, in writing somewhere? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It, it, no, it, no it, 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 it really is. Because we, they understand that, you know, in, in terms of recruiting, that, that, that's the generation, the uh, workforce that they're having to draw from. And so the fact that somebody had a, a, a joint back in, 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 in college or in school, that, but, you know, I guess something about the last six months, I don't know what that is. But, you know, I mean, here we are. It's, it's legal everywhere. We're we still arresting people for two ounces or less. I, okay, I don't, I'll, I'll get off that soon. <laughs> you about to but go I'm, in. Yeah, but, but my point is, is just look how we are migrating. Mm -hmm. So if you're migrating like that for what you I mean, again, I'm from a generation where if you had a joint, I remember people doing correctional time, mm -hmm. not jail, mm -hmm. correctional time for, you know, being a couple of joints. Now, you know, as I said, long as you haven't smoked in the last six months. I mean, think about that. <laughs> that's, that's pretty devastating. All right. So we're getting to the tail end of our hair questions, hair story questions. Black, I want you to complete this statement for sure. me. So just repeat after me and, and complete sure. it. So black hair is... So black hair is the probably epitome of who you are. I can pretty much look at your hair and tell something about you. And that's what I want them to do. I want them to, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm gonna keep saying my skin, I'm comfortable in my hair. You know, that's it. What's interesting, I'm going to keep going biblical too, that, that Samson, it, everybody talks about Samson, and of course what his mother told him, uh, don't tell anybody your secret, but nobody except uh, for individuals who have done the portrayal can talk about anything other than he had long hair. Did he have locks? Mm -hmm. What did he have? It depends. It depends on, and it depends on who the uh, and how you interpret it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let me think. I want to make sure I don't uh, miss anything. Oh yes, I want to make sure I get this. If you had to explain black hair discrimination to someone who is not black, how would you help them understand some of the things that people are facing in the workplace? Hmm. That would be uh, probably a, a, a real challenge, but the, the, I used to tell young people, my hair is twisted and not my brain. And so if, if in fact they are performing and the hair is not fuchsia, uh, unless they're singing the nightclub, but if it's not fuchsia, then what? What? What is it? I mean, you could be Anglo and have uh, uh, straight hair, and if you came up in any future, you couldn't work. I mean, that's my point. It, that's a, a color thing, but in terms of texture and how you're doing with your hair, 
what? As long as you're able to perform, as long as you represent me mentally in a way that that is 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 that I can be proud. And that's pretty much the end of it. So You've been rocking your hair like this for a really long time. In fact, I saw a picture over there from 2001 saying John Wally Price rocking a new do. How did it go over with people when you initially started rocking your twist? Um, it was like, what's happened? Is there something in your life that is, why, why are you doing this? But that's, that's two decades. And again, it was just the, an evolution of where I wanted to go. Uh, I, I saw that and I felt as though, you know, I could, in fact, I could, I, I could be comfortable. And I did and as I, it just continued and continued. And today, you, I think I said, you'd be surprised. Uh, my hair now is probably every bit of 18, uh, inches long. Really? Yes. Okay. But when it's twisted up, you obviously uh, keep it uh, off your neck there too. Yeah, I keep it off. I keep All it right. off my off my okay. collar. <laughs> okay, off your collar. All right. So one of the reasons that we're having this conversation, why your name was brought up, I had a conversation with a young man by the name of Dakari Davis. He works for the Dart Police Department as a motorcycle officer. Mm -hmm. He um, had an issue with, with his hair, and basically that issue, according to him, led him to be on desk duty, right? How did you learn about Dakari's situation, and how did you intercede on his behalf? Well, Dakari's a, a, a constituent, uh, a, 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 a young man uh, with, a, with, a, with a great future, um, family, again. And just to pass that background to be there, why are you having an issue with his hair? And they did. Um, and I interceded because he was my constituent. Uh, there were some reasonable people uh, that I tried to explain to, him, especially in Dakari's uh, position, just for him to get there and remain there. Has he been performing? It's back to the other question. Has he been performing? And the only issue you see is as he's transitioning with his hair, that's unacceptable. And so they, they told, basically told me, said to cool my jets and, and uh, uh, they'd handle it. And, and, and they did. Uh, but a remarkable young man and uh, provides a, a, a great service you know, to our community, and you're going to resign him to desk duty, not because he's not performing, but because his hair, mm -hmm. and that was unacceptable. Yes. And as I said, found reasonable people. Constituent for sure. Any other reason you felt like it was necessary, though, for you to intercede? He was, he was, a, he was a young African-American man, you know, and... I did not need him to be um, trying to. Uh, I, I did not need him to be uh, neutered mm -hmm. as a as a young African American man. Like I said, he's he's trying to work. Did not have uh, a poor work history. Did not have a war, poor work performance. Yeah, again, a family. What? And you're gonna you're gonna neuter him because of his hair. And when I saw him, he he presented well. You know, I'm not gonna use the traditional well spoken. He, oh, he presented. Don't even. Uh, I don't know it. See, but see, that's my point. That's that's a that's a stereotypical conception. Oh, he he speaks so well. Really? What does that mean? Mm -hmm. I mean. It's in command of, of, of language. Can you, can you, are you conversant with him? Mm -hmm. And that, that, but, but again, he, 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 he was, he was great, but he, he was a young African-American man. You know, we, we got enough hurdles that we have to deal with. And here's a young man, again, that, that is jumping those hurdles. Why are you going to deal with him about his crown? 
Now, was this a series of conversations or you showed up one day and was like, look, we got to talk about this? One and done. Yeah, we, we, we did one and done. <laughs> what are your thoughts on his hairstyle being uh, alleged, allegedly being a violation of their policy? Well, again, you know, policies are made to be adjusted. You got to adjust policies. Again, I, I recall when law enforcement could not have hair on their face. You know, period. You know, officers not going to be, I mean, they adjusted. Mm -hmm. That workforce that you're having to draw from, you've got to do some basic adjustments. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, that's it. But of all things, hair, it wasn't as though it created a danger. It wasn't in his eyes so that he couldn't see when he was on his motorcycle. You know, it wasn't down his back so that some, uh, some assailant uh, could, could grab him. And what? It, 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 it fit under his, you know, he, he's, a, he's a, a motorcycle officer, so it, it fit under his, uh, his helmet. Mm -hmm. What? That was just, I mean, come on. A one and done conversation, and That's <laughs> it, it was over with, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and, and I just appreciate him because so, so, sometimes that <clears throat> they want to make individuals uh, the example, okay? And again, I'm back to my Angelou and courage. You can practice all the virtues in the world, but if you don't practice the virtue of courage, Nothing else matters. Faith and fear don't dwell. Mm -hmm. Can't dwell in the same temple. And so, you know, hey, if I go, I go. If I perish, I perish. But the fact that he stood and had family, he, he's, he's one of my young heroes. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you want to say about the Dakari situation? Well, again, it wasn't just about him. That's that's it. <clears throat> he he could have acquiesced, and as you say, either did a fade or shaved his head, and everybody would have been okay with that. Mm -hmm. You know, if I show up the next day and my my and all my hair is gone, and everybody's okay with that, really? That's and again, it wasn't just about him. Mm -hmm. You know, it it, it was about an evolution. Mm -hmm. And so in the workplace, we need to understand that.